you know, and it's very like extreme, you know, I could be worst case scenario, I moved to some rural part in Wales, far from civilization, and just hit a hard reset on my life. Hit a hard reset on my life. Reset on my life. Reset, 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 reset. I just realized this is the wrong house. Um, let me try that again. Yo, uh, so the video you're about to see has been quite a while in the making. Uh, I just wanted to say that if, oh, I'm out of breath. I just want to say that if the quality dips during the video, that's because some of it, <coughs> that's because some of it's filmed on my phone because that camera is bloody heavy and I can't be expected to carry it all the time. So that being said, enjoy. Okay, cool. I'm just gonna freestyle this because reading off a script uh, just isn't working. Yeah, I was gonna make a really like arty video with voiceover where what I'm saying sounds almost poetic, and then it kind of became very obvious that that's 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 not me. Basically, it was a very intense chapter of my life, so I sort of wanted to capture the last days of my housemates and I together when it was just the three of us. We lived with a fourth person, but um, the less said about them, the better. It was a weird time. It was very like turbulent. Like there was a lot of highs, yeah. <laughs> lows. Oh man, I'm so so tired. <laughs> and like weird small things that like I didn't realise that I would miss as much as I do now. But what's weird is when you go from like complete independence. You know, you're worrying about bills every day, things that get sorted, making sure the furniture goes. <laughs> That is what they call the cream of the crop. Look at that! Oh, I want to piss now. Making sure things get moved, making sure things are done. And then to go from that to then just very little worries. You know, I don't have to worry about half the stuff I used to worry about then. And it's kind of crazy to think, like, I didn't think I would miss a rented building that offered me so little. There's, like, plants growing there. Listen to this. It's a single glazed window. The most terrifying staircase. It's basically a death trap. And you'd have to be able to like, oh my God, it's come out again. We have a bathroom in our sitting room in case you want to hear our friends pee right next to the TV, which is like there. We, there's a nozzle here. We have no idea what it does. We have our booze by the sink. We have our GameCube shower. Our collection of crutches. Every possible seasoning known to man. This is where I spent over two years in this ginormous room. Like it was just a, a weird building that was always stuck in the 80s. It was like always too cold or too hot. Like every room there was just something off with it. And I'm pretty sure my like friends probably thought, what the hell sort of like den have I just walked into? That's the thing when you find the right housemates. Like it, it shows that even a house that people actually thought unironically was derelict, that even that can feel like a home because Beautiful. the company is so good. <laughs> we spoil you! <laughs> <laughs> and one of the best parts of the whole situation was how much stuff I was able to get rid of. Or to be honest, even as a group that we got rid of. And it was ridiculously therapeutic. Like, I didn't realise how much stuff I was still dragging around after all these years and I always felt reluctant to move because I was there like, oh, all this stuff. My childhood bed. And it is, it is like the anchor that you don't think of. So we basically like destroyed it or donated it and it was bloody liberating. <laughs> it's a boy. What are you going to do to it, mate? I'm Johnny Knoxville. Oh, this is the table smack. Oh, sh shit. <laughs> That destruction. I'm Johnny Knoxville, and this is gonna break. Wait, Jesus Christ, you're supposed to break the covers! It's not your washing line anymore. You need to break more. Yeah, yeah, there you go. There you go. Oh my god. Yeah! They're so heavy. Oh, it's not focusing very much. Uh, what do I do now? Booga booga. <laughs> <laughs> <God. laughs> <laughs> 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 I think this should be in there. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> no, don't. <laughs> Well, no, as you are now, I guess, yeah. Um, Depends on how much blood you want to draw. <laughs> <laughs> Give me candy! Oh my god, there's actually legit chocolate in there. <laughs> <laughs> it's oh, a boy! That's beautiful. That's gonna have some like, footage of us clearing it up so that we're not fucking bad people. It's also like we were like, sorting out the house because we were kind of thinking like we have to leave it as a blank slate. Like even stuff that wasn't even ours. It's like, we didn't accumulate all this like unclaimed expired booze, yet we're the ones sorting it. Oh my god. It smells like tea. Weaker version of rum. So many memories of like house parties from years ago that still like leaves its impact. And I remember on the last day of us all together at the house, there was this like feeling in the air. Like it was nervous excitement because we knew big changes were going to come, but it was also going to be kind of emotional because we're all going down different routes. A 500 pound printer. We don't know if it's the right way up or not. <laughs> Why are you not Intimidation, that is. <laughs> From business to manual labor. What was that? Oh. I'm shirtless for this bit. Three of them. Oh, oh, sorry. I'm glad you like that. Are you recording? I'm recording oh, it. Yeah, that was great. And it was like the end of a chapter that we didn't think would end, or at least not in this way. And I remember trying to stay as happy as I could be because it was avoiding that sinking realisation that everything was going to change. It's when people find out that I'm actually a massive hoarder. We've still got bloody space, haven't we? Don't, don't tempt it, just... Yeah, you can have your emotional shutting the doors. Not emotional for me, Fucking hell, just to clarify, I am not upset and I never <laughs> will be. <laughs> Crying for the last 40 minutes. I mean, obviously I couldn't really like fake it for very long, like I'm very heart on the sleeve like I, I cried I cried I can say that oh my god oh just, it's, it's like it's like it's like it's finally hitting me like that I'm actually <laughs> driving you there yeah because it's like I mean going to Wales I might as well be dead right <laughs> <laughs> that being said you might wonder what does like any of this have to do with being a burnt out artist like did I just include the title to make it uh so I could include it in my art channel uh that's probably like somewhat true but it was also because I think that kind of environment was kind of affecting my creativity more than I realised. Because I spent those five years in a weird comfort zone where it was stressful but I sort of knew what to expect. And then when that cycle ended I realised that my life was basically a rabbit circling the same cage expecting a different answer. Like I would beat myself up all the time about not being productive and put all this pressure and every day it was just like worse. Like I just wanted to draw less the more I beat myself up. But I, yeah, I just continued to do so. And no one was expecting anything of me or telling me to do things, and yet I was still making myself chronically miserable. I don't know how to end this video. Basically, I'm in Wales, and I had this epiphany, and I thought it would be a cool video. Because I had this realisation of, why am I doing anything that doesn't make me happy? I don't mean small shit like, I'm not gonna wash up because washing up is a chore and chores aren't fun. No, I'm not stupid. I mean things that make me happy in terms of, do I wanna be an artist the rest of my life? Does doing art make me happy? And it didn't really before. Well, it did and then it didn't. And now I'm trying to find that again because I realize it wasn't making myself happy because I was putting all these like made up rules on myself. Like, no one's telling me to draw in a certain way or draw certain things, and yet I'm telling myself that's what the world wants, that's what I should do. Let's just keep doing things that make me miserable. That doesn't make sense. So I sort of took a step back and then been like, okay, well, what does make me happy? I mean, I'd be lying if I said I was there yet, but I'm definitely doing a lot better, and there's something about being surrounded by nature and taking care of every living thing that is just like chicken soup for the soul. Yeah, I'm waffling. What I'm trying to say is, I made this whole video to make myself feel better. 